Hi everybody and welcome to this first longer video in the Celebrate program activity that's going to be going on throughout August. Celebrate is all about celebrating what it means to be a GP trainee today and is a perfect opportunity to welcome new ST1s into the Team GP family as well as reintroducing ST2s and ST3s to some of the amazing stuff that trainees do and have access to throughout general practice training. Um, I'm Anthony, I'm the chair of the college's AIT community, and today I'm joined by Professor Mike Holmes, who is one of the vice chairs of the college for membership and international. Hi Mike, how are you doing today? Hi, hi Anthony, yeah, um, great, thanks. It's great to be here, great to be taking part in this. Um, as Anthony says, I'm a GP myself, I work up in uh, the north of England in sort of north and east Yorkshire um, and I've been involved with the college now for um, a long time. I've been a member right throughout my career and I'm currently privileged to be the Vice Chair of Council uh, for Membership and International and that includes um, sort of um, leading on English faculties, devolved nation faculties and a lot of the community groups that are emerging uh, within the college. So today's conversation is all around um, welcoming people to the home of general practice, the college. Um, so Mike, you mentioned you've done lots of different things for the college um, and had lots of different involvement. What is it that the college kind of means to you? Like why, why have you got involved with the college? What benefits have you got out of being an active member um, throughout your career at different stages? Yeah, um, I think it's been, um, it's been a really positive influence um, in my career. I mean, I, I remember do my membership exams um, and you know it was about trying to um, uh, achieve a higher quality um, and, and be on a uh, uh, you know be recognized by peers as having done that um, but I think for me um, it's much more than that actually uh, you know I, I think I got involved with my local faculty and um, they were helping um, I, to run courses locally I, I had an interest in minor surgery and um, got involved in supporting uh, the college to run minor surgery courses locally and then got involved in uh, the faculty committee, the faculty board um, and really just it, it helped me to meet people around the, the region, it helped me to um, uh, get to know people with you know at the other end of their career with experience and I guess I got informal mentorship through that um, um, and it introduced me to um, getting involved with other stakeholders around, around the patch, certainly Health Education England in Yorkshire and Humber where I work, I was introduced to them um, through the current, through the chair of the faculty at that time. Um, I then sort of progressed and, and became um, uh, an officer of the faculty and eventually chair of the faculty. Um, and that allowed me to get involved with colleagues from around the country. Um, I then um, took up the, the role as the faculty rep on council, which was, which was really interesting, a really interesting um, uh, position to hold, to hear what's going on uh, both politically um, and at faculty level around the whole country and then ultimately uh, was so inspired by it and um, enjoyed it that I stood uh, to be vice chair of council and, and, and that's where I am today and you know that that's been a really interesting journey so I think um, you know in answer to your question Anthony it's been it's been really positive for me um, um, throughout my career and 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 that you know, yes, of course, the exams are there at the beginning and they're an interesting launch pad. But for me, um, the college is so much more. I almost don't think about that anymore. It's about the, the professional support, um, the colleague support, the networking, and the ability to influence um, on a national footprint. That, that, that feels really exciting to me. Mm. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think for whenever I speak to lots of trainees, the one thing that they that we have no option but to think about is always around assessments and exams um, and membership fees, obviously. Um, and um, I think that actually my the reason that I got involved with the college as a rep initially was because I wanted to learn much more about the organisation, um, other things that it was doing. I had a few friends who'd been reps and then had the opportunity to stand in my local area and then become the chair later on. And it's really been for me um, a, an amazing opportunity. In some ways, it feels like the college has become kind of a, a second home and, a, and as I feel like I do, uh, I've really benefited from being an active member and I've had a huge amount of opportunity to learn things about myself that I didn't know I was good at, had the opportunity to meet loads of amazing people, make those friendships and connections 
Um, and then as a chair, I've had the really amazing opportunity to get involved in lots of, lots of different aspects of college life, um, particularly with everything that's happened over the last few months because of COVID. Um, so yeah, so I feel like I'm now approaching the end of training just a few couple of months ago. Um, and I feel like I've really, really benefited from making the most out of the mem my membership. And to anyone that was watching this video, I'd really encourage you to do the same as well, whether that's being a local rep or getting involved in your local faculty. Um, the connections that you make in the relationships have really made my training experience a lot richer. And I feel that now I'm coming to the end, I'll be heading into the world of independent practice with a really strong network and um, that same sense of kind of community that we get from our BTS groups, but being able to replicate that in a different kind of sphere as well. So I think the college does a really great job of, of that. Um, in terms of uh, taking things uh, kind of to the level of being an officer in the college, I think often when you speak to people, they don't necessarily understand the kind of structure of the college or what different people do. Um, so if you were kind of explaining it to someone who has, who is just very new as an ST1, how would you kind of explain the way that college functions in terms of who's there, how decisions are made, um, and potentially how they can, um, can learn more about that process as well? Yeah, I mean, I think on the on the outside, looking in college can feel um, like it's really complex. Um, you know, from my perspective, this is a membership organisation that exists for the benefit um, of our members. Um, so what we want to do is provide support to them. So the college has various different departments, but um, they're really centred around the needs of our members. So we have a, a professional development, professional development and quality, which is around exams. Yes but also around CPD, um, perhaps developing and uh, delivering events. Um, uh, linked to that is um, our conferences functions. We have our annual conference, um, which is a great opportunity for members to come together, to network, to socialize, to learn from each other. Um, we have our membership and international um, directorate, um, which you know, is really about member services. So we're, we're there to deliver what our members want, to make contact with them, to make sure they're getting information, um, we, we, we have uh, membership communities, which um, are not only our um, AITs and our first fives and our late career and retired members, but we also reach out um, to, to doctors earlier in their careers and students earlier in their careers. We have a really active um, GP student um, uh, um, function, and, and we um, link to as many of the GP societies. I think we're linked to almost all the GP societies in in all the medical schools. Um, even before that now, we've got this project, this um, product called Observe GP, which is helping um, um, applicants to medical school gain practical work experience to facilitate their entry into medical school. And then hopefully in the future, they, they may choose to, to go down the path um, of general practice. Um, we also have um, other really um, uh, important um, communities and special interest groups. We have our LGBTQ plus community, um, we have our BAME community, and we're really, um, you know, really focusing on trying to support these communities as best we can. And we have things like our overdiagnosis group, um, which really help us explore what's going on at the front line of medicine and to help members, um, uh, you know, practice medicine uh, in, in, in the most effective and evidence-based way um, as possible. Um, we also have our policy and campaigns department, so part of the function of the college is to, is to influence um, government influence um, our, our, our policy makers to try and make sure we're getting um, things in place that really support the profession and support members at the front line and we actually um, pay quite a lot of importance to that uh, because we believe we have a voice and, and it's really good to use that voice um, uh, for gain really for our, for our members so I think that just gives you a flavor of perhaps the complexity and um, when you say who's there well um, the college is made up of um, uh, uh, our council, uh, which is uh, representatives from all around the country, from our faculties, and also nationally elected council members, and, and some representatives of various committees, like yourself, Anthony, on the AIT committee. Um, and, and the council has a, a group of officers, a chair, three vice chairs, an honorary secretary, um, a treasurer, um, and, and a president. And, and we work together to hopefully be the member's voice in the college. There's an executive team which is run by our chief operating officer and that executive team sort of mirrors the officer team 
And then we have um, our board of trustees, which again comprise of mem mainly members, or we do have some lay trustees, and they're really responsible for ensuring the governance of the college is where it needs to be, and that the organisation is safe, um, both from a financial uh, perspective and also from a decision-making perspective. And those three elements work together to deliver the things we uh, need to deliver um, on behalf of our members. Yeah, I mean, I think when I was starting out um, as, a, as a local rep, the college felt very big and complicated and confusing. And I think it, it, it is to a certain extent. It's a big organisation. It does a lot of different things. Um, but it's been one of the, one of the really nice parts about um, being kind of more actively involved as a rep um, has been not just learning about how the college functions, but then, for example, getting more involved in certain campaigns or consultations that the college is doing. Also learning more about kind of the wider healthcare system, where I sit within that, where the college sits within that, and how as a, a member of the college, you actually have an opportunity to influence some of that as well. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a rep, but if you're contributing to college consultations um, or kind of being actively involved and engaged with what the college is doing, you do have a definite opportunity to really influence the direction that general practice takes. It's something that I've kind of felt over the last few years anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I think that's right, Anthony. I think, you know, when you, when you sit on council, you genuinely, you genuinely do feel that there is a route for members to have their voice heard, either through the faculty reps or, as you say, through the many consultations that we, that we do run. So, um, I, I, you know, I think there's always a suggestion that we, we need to do more to connect with members of the front line. And, and I would say we've never done enough. You know, we, we, it'll never be complete. We'll always, have, we'll always be looking to innovate and do more and more and more. But um, where I sit right now, it feels like there is a route. Um, and we're always working on improving that route. And I think, as you say, it's um, kind of thinking about how we engage with members is an evolving process. You mentioned the LGBT community, the BAME community. Those are both fairly new groups within the college. Um, so I think that for anyone that's listening to this, your membership of the organisation isn't just about being a trainee, but actually um, it's really important for all of us to recognise that there's that GPs as individuals are made up by lots of different elements of their identity and all of those are important for properly representing people's views in the college and representing what it means to be a GP as well. Yeah, I think so. And I think that's been, you know, one of the most exciting things I've been involved in was our GP summit, our community summit, which um, we ran just before the annual conference uh, last year. Um, and it was really good to see all these different communities um, um, come together um, in, in a single day, in a single event, listen to each other's stories, learn from each other, feel part of um, uh, our college actually. And, 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 and I, you know, I took a huge amount of positivity and energy and, and you know, it, sometimes it can be um, you know, quite challenging being in the roles that we have, but actually when you, come into, when you come into an event like that and you kind of understand why you do what you do, um, and, and, you know, I still look back on that event as a, as a really positive and almost pivotal point in my uh, time as vice chair. And, you know, sadly this year, um, because of COVID, we're not going to be able to come together physically like that. But I think we are hoping to run um, a virtual community summit um, at some point in the autumn. And I'm really, really looking forward to that event. Yeah. A shameless plug for me is to any trainees listening to this. We also do have the Somewhere In Between podcast, which um, there is an episode which talks all about um, different community groups at the college with myself, with the chair of the Student and Foundation Doctor Committee, with the chair of the First Five Committee, and also the Late Career and Retired Members Group. And that was a really great opportunity to, these are people that I know well and have the opportunity to talk to often, but I think actually hearing everyone's reflections from all different stages of what it means to be a GP from the very um, first steps that you're taking when you're thinking about what specialty you might to do towards the very end of your career when you're thinking about how you can give something back and you can contribute in other ways um, outside of clinical practice as well. That was, that's a really nice episode for anyone who wants to learn more about what other community groups are doing at the college as well. Um, and I think, you know, you kind of touched on um, COVID has had a big impact in the way that members can engage with one another over the last few months. For me, I've actually in some ways felt that COVID has really helped bring trainee, the trainee community together. I think we've had lots of people connecting online in different ways, um, having there's been lots and lots of different webinars and digital events. 
how have you found the kind of membership experience has been able to um, obviously there's challenges but also some of the positives that have come out of COVID have you experienced any of that as well? Yeah I think so I mean I think um, the, the big impact um, for me was the way initially the college came together to build resources for members so that, that you know we always had a website and our app but we really focused on building resources within that um, within that website in terms of the guidance that was coming out and seemingly changing daily around COVID. We put a lot of time and energy and effort into that. You know, I've been, um, I was asked to lead on the well-being aspect and it's been really good to put um, a, a resource together around well-being for members because, you know, we, we recognize that, um, you know, that the whole system's under stress and general practice is under stress and focusing um, on our well-being is really important. Um, we've also noticed it at faculty level that we've started to have faculty meetings virtually and a lot of the events and learning um, have obviously moved into that virtual space and you know I think that has been really positive it's enabled us to, to keep connected at a time where it, you know it could have been really challenging um, and we, we really do need to be connected during this time and moving forward and I think that probably will be a lasting legacy of COVID for the college in that you know we'll We'll have much more of a, a digital, a virtual presence, and I think that will that will benefit us. I'm hoping it'll feel like the whole country is a bit more connected, that we're a bit more inclusive, and of course there'll certainly be environmental benefits. Um, you know, just taking the example of my faculty meeting alone, I think there was 20 people at that meeting, and at least half of us would have had to drive even an hour in each direction. So you know, we probably saved about 20 hours of driving in one meeting. So that. I think there will be hidden benefits of, of, the, of the changes that we've made as a consequence of COVID. Yeah, I think I totally agree with all of that. And I think it will be, I think some of the digital events we've seen and the different ways of connecting um, have been really positive, especially in, in areas of the country, faculties which are spread over very large areas. And it's often people involved tra having to travel long distances, which they might not always be able to do. So being able to have a much more flexible way to connect with one another has been really useful. Having said that, um, you know, some of my best memories of uh, the last few years have come from things like annual conference, which is always an amazing opportunity to see friends and colleagues from across the UK. So hopefully in the not too, too, too distant future, we'll be able to get back to some of that as well. Because I think, um, you know, face to face is always going to be important. But I agree, it's really nice that we've been able to continue to connect in a meaningful and slightly different way over the last months as well. Yeah, I think that's right. And it probably reflects what's going on in our consultation rooms, isn't it? That, that um, you know, we've, we've moved right across to the sort of uh, remote digital consulting and actually there'll be a, there's a sweet spot. And I think, um, you know, that'll be true, true of our um, events and meetings. You know, I think we'll see a mixture of digital meetings and a mixture of face-to-face -face meetings. And I think, you know, as you say, the conferences are such a positive event where we get to meet people from all around the UK. And of course, our international colleagues and international members. It is worth saying that the, the college is a, an international organization. and We've got something like 5,000 um, international members and we do work in many different countries around the world. Um, and you know, some of that has slowed down because of COVID, um, but it's still a really important part of what we do. And, and you know, that inevitably will change moving forward, but we'll still have a, a very um, important international presence and of course one thing I must mention is that that, that is a, as a college we're hosting uh, the World Organization of Family Doctors Wonka's Conference for Europe in 2022 um, and it would be great to see um, as many members there and as many trainees there as possible and I'm sure more information will come out about that closer to the time. Yeah I think that's a really exciting thing that was going to be happening in the not too distant future and I think the international work the college does is something that I definitely didn't know anything about really um, until the last couple of years and it's been really interesting to um, to learn more about that and to see how that's developing and the college also has a, a junior international committee which has always traditionally been very active it's another great way as a trainee that you can um, get involved in that space if international work or learning more is um, something that you're passionate about so that's another great thing to look out for um, you can find them on Twitter and on the website for the college as well. Um, so I think, you know, we've touched on so many really important things around being the college being much more than just about exams and assessments over the next few years. 
as a trainee, those are naturally always going to be the things that we come back to because they are a really important part of us being able to progress and um, hopefully eventually become a GP at the end of it. But I think, you know, this discussion has just highlighted how the college offers so much more throughout your training, um, opportunities to learn, to make connections, to get to know people and learn things about both general practice, the wider healthcare system, um, and yourself as well, if, you, if you're kind of contributing towards that process as well. If you were going to kind of sum up in just a couple of sentences what the college means to you, Mike, what would you, what would you say to people who are listening? Well, look, I've talked about it being a really positive influence. I've talked about it as being something that's there for you throughout the whole of your career. Um, but one of the things, that, one of the phrases that, that sums it up for me, I think, is, is the sort of um, strap line for our late careers and retired members committee. Um, and it's something that their chair, Mona Aquilinas, has, uh, has worked on with, with the rest of the committee over the last 12 months. But they talk about lifelong learning and lifelong connections. And for me, that sums it up beautifully. You know, we start off with our exams and our training. We move into CPD and events and conferences, and that learning never stops. But alongside that, and perhaps even more importantly, is the connections we make, the relationships with colleagues, both locally and nationally and internationally. Um, and for me, that really does sum up the college, and that's what it's about for me, and um, that's why I'll continue to be a member for the rest of my career and, and I'm sure into my retirement. Yeah, I totally echo that. I think connection is, again, to me, one of the most valuable things I've got out of my college membership. And I think it's, you know, connections and relationships is one of the reasons that many people end up finding themselves in general practice as a career. And so being able to find that sense of fulfillment and satisfaction with your career outside of the consulting room in the way that you can connect with colleagues via organizations like the college is a really special part of being a GP as well. Um, so thank you so much, Mike, for talking with us and sharing um, some of your reflections on what the college is all about and what it means to be a member. Um, for everybody that's watching, over the next month during the Celebrate Festival, there's going to be loads more opportunities to connect. We've got webinars, there's going to be more videos, there's going to be lots of content across social media. So please do keep an eye on your emails and on so different social media platforms um, to be up to date on what's coming next over the month of August. Thanks so much, Mike, for talking and thanks everybody for listening and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Thanks, Bye.